Hey, it's Sick Boy from the Gaming Anarchist Collective, and welcome to the Anarchic Guide for the 4th of November 2013. News from Valve is like waiting for a bus. You wait along for ages and then three come along at once. I have three little stories to share with you regarding Steam, specifically the Steam boxes. First of all, they have announced that, with regards to the Steam OS, they will not make exclusive titles so that you do not require a Steam box in order to play any of the games they're, develop they're developing on the Steam OS. So I think that's some good news in general. It's good for choice, it's good for developers, it's good for everybody, it's good for the consumer. It helps keep prices down. That's good news. Second piece is that they will be unveiling who they are partnering with to produce the Steam boxes at the CES event in January 2014. So we haven't got very long to wait before we actually see which manufacturers are stepping up in order to make these set-top boxes. And the third being, they've announced, the, they've shown a picture of the first prototype of a Steam box. And lo and behold, it's a black rectangle with some diagonal lines on it, very much like the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox. So, 10 out of 10 for originality there, thanks for making something that was entirely uninspiring. When we saw previously, um, the uh, prototype that wasn't actually the Steam box, the little piston box, which actually looked kind of novel, although it wasn't the most powerful machine in the world, it looked kind of cool. This just looks like a modern console, so a bit disappointed at the lameness there, but you know, what can you do? In a bit of sad news today, Miyamoto, the creator of Mario, to many the godfather of video games, one of the most influential people in video game history has said that after Super Mario 3D World he will be very unlikely to be working directly on the next entry of the series and he'll be dialing things back and he will only be working on smaller scale projects. I am happy to see for him personally that he's taking uh, away from those large teams and having something where he has a lot more independent creative control on. However, to me it's a bit of a shame to see the man who has nurtured one of the truly most important icons in gaming through years and years of games. Some hit, some miss, some just absolutely incredible. And it's a shame to see him bow out of that. He has said that Mario is in good hands. It is not a franchise that's going to be ignored. But personally, it's a sad, it's a sad day to see him leave from working on that franchise. It, it's a character that he has, he has devoted much of his life to. And I trust that he knows what he's doing when it comes to handing creatively the reins over to a new generation of developers. I hope they run with it. I hope they make something truly outstanding. But it feels very much like the end of an era. Well, at the point of recording this, it is 2 hours and 45 minutes to the release of Call of Duty Ghosts and the game has already been hacked. There are versions available on the Xbox 360 and the PS3 on the cracked consoles, which have aim bots, which have wall hacks, which have speed boosts, which have XB boosts, already. Already. The game is not even out and this game has been hacked. Now, considering that Call of Duty's core, considering the reason that it's so successful, particularly on the Xbox, is down to the MLG community, the fact that it is a pro game when it comes to, there is a huge, huge community of those who play league, play in tournaments for a large amount of sponsorship money. It is a big earner. It is actually quite odd to see Activision not said a word about this. They are not commenting on the hat version. Now, damn right, if they find people, they will be initiating bans. It happened with every previous Call of Duty. People get caught. People get perma-banned. Well, they say perma-banned. I think they're perma-banned for about five, well, they're for about five years. So, essentially the next half of the next console generation, they will not be able to play the game competitively. Now, that is a bit shitty, but let's face it, people have been getting around that. If the game is hackable that early, it does not say very good things about, I say about sustainability, what, it's going to be outdated next year? There'll be a Treyarch one out next November. I'm, I'm baffled. I'm baffled that they managed to release a game so easily hackable. But then clearly, I doubt they've updated the code much. I know they say they've got an, oh, there's a new engine. I know there's a new dog. But what the fuck? What the fuck, Activision? You, Activ Activision, your company, your whole company, you and your subsidiary Blizzard make some of the most massive, in fact, all of, pretty much all of the major tournament games. It is your responsibility to make sure your titles are well shored up. 
that they have good security in place to allow a competitive title like Call of Duty to be fair and based on skill alone. It isn't even fucking release day and your title has been hacked. Sort that shit out on behalf of all the people who actually put a great deal of care into their cause. Now, I'm probably not going to buy ghosts, but there are a lot of people who do. And for those people, for your customers... Speaking as pretty much an ex-customer of yours, I haven't bought an Activision game in a wee while. On behalf of your current customers, treat them with some fucking respect and fix your game. Shore up your hacks and ban the cheats as quick as fucking possible. While sticking with Call of Duty, Mark Rubin from Infinity Ward was interviewed by Edge magazine and he was flat out asked about the disparity between the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One version of Call of Duty Ghosts. Those of you who aren't aware, I don't know where you've been but it's been all over the place, that on the Xbox One, Call of Duty Ghosts will run at 60 frames per second and will be 720p, which is not true high def, it's what we call over here HD ready. And with regards to PlayStation 4, it will be running natively at 1080p and 60 frames per second. Now, the Xbox One will upscale to 1080p. But for those of you who have a Blu-ray player, you can see the difference between a DVD upscaled to 1080p and a Blu-ray player running natively at 1080p. There is clearly a difference in quality. Otherwise, why would you buy a Blu-ray if digital upscaling could give you the same output? That's just a fact. Now, he has clearly said that it is not just a power issue with regards to the Xbox One versus the PlayStation 4. Now, he was very cagey about not slagging off anyone's hardware, understandably. Infinity would have a high, high and long-standing arrangement with Microsoft. Of course they do. It's their primary benefactor. They pay Activision a damn fortune for that exclusive, those exclusive access to the map packs. They fund MLG, which is a major, major supporter of Call of Duty, of course. So, yes, they're not going to slag off Xbox. So, what he has to say is, it's not just the hardware power disparity. Claiming it clearly, there is a power disparity. The PlayStation 4 is more powerful. But also, with regards to optimization, he clearly said that the amount of system resources available on the Xbox One is lower than that of the PlayStation 4. Now, he did go on and say, of course, after years of developing on the software, if you compare COD 2 to COD 4, you can see a huge leap in progress, and that is very true. Now, he will be saying, of course, yeah, you look at you look at Call of Duty 3 on the Xbox 360, and you look at Ghost on the 360, there is a huge change. Obviously, they have shown that they can optimise the machine more. So, are both machines capable of 4K in time? Most likely they are, but the fact of the matter is that the operating system is limiting the resource available to developers on the Xbox One, it is making it harder to produce as good a quality a game. Now both running at 60fps, one's working at higher resolution. There is no more discussion about which is a more powerful machine, which is the more successful, time will tell. Which one is better optimised for gaming? Clearly Sony have done their homework and they've taken what they happened with the, the cell processor, they've seen how much it, it affected them when it came to optimization. see the Skyrim port, how terrible it was, how some of the ports, even though the game system was higher quality, higher power, higher power output, was lower quality, was more glitchy, there were often more glitches. However, towards the end of the generation, look at GTA 5. Look at how GTA 5 runs smoothly on the PlayStation, unless you play it digitally, and how the Xbox didn't even run necessarily smoothly on the disc and they had to send out a special warning, do not install the play disc because it fucks up the game. Okay? So, let's put this shit to bed because the most powerful machine is not the most successful machine. But do not lie to yourself by saying they can use the power of the cloud processing to make it more powerful. Really? Well, where is it? Because they both have access to cloud technology. The cloud is not a magical thing. It's a server. It's not fucking magic, it's standard, standard technology. Why do you think we have the protein folding software where people send things, and that's why people have been working out cures and looking at pro and folding proteins in order for the proteomic sequence on people's computers in the background. It uses, that's cloud processing. That's what it is. That's how that, it's almost it's the same basis for things like torrents. It's the same thing. It's utilising power and bandwidth from different machines and pooling it into one powerful mess. That's what it is. So, let's have some reality check here. Clearly, 
As of right now, PS4 is the more powerful machine. And if that is the reason you're going to buy your console, then there you have it. Well, the confusing of as hell Metal Gear Solid 5 has now come to a bit more light. Now those of you who follow the game will know that they've announced Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain. We didn't know if they were the same game because one was done under the whole fake development team and everything. We didn't really know what was happening. It's not really been clear. Now it's been absolute it's now absolutely clear. Ground Zeroes is coming out as a separate title before Phantom Pain. They've now announced that Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes will be released next spring 2014. This will be uh, and it's going to introduce elements that are going to be in the Phantom Pain. So it's somewhat of a Phantom Pain light. It's going to set the scene. They're both open world stealth games. It is going to introduce a lot of things and then move on and then Phantom Pain is going to be the major title. So Ground Zeroes is somewhat of a paid for large scale demo or it's not something like a, a beta build or an alpha build or anything because buying this gives you no access to the Phantom Pain. Now it's $30 and for some reason 30 fucking pounds, which I think is a goddamn disgrace yet again, the UK gets shafted by about 50% of the price. That is shitty. However, they did offer for one of the first times ever, I have to admit, good for them, the digital download will be cheaper by $10. So the digital download of that game will be significantly cheaper than the disc. At last, there's actually a reason to buy something on the Xbox Live or the PSN store. There's actually a reason for it. Now, I'm a little bit in two minds about this because it's not a full price title. I don't know how big the title's going to be. Uh, but unless it's fairly significant in size, I'm going to be fucking furious. Because let's face it, they're going to be utilising the Fox engine, so this is going to be a taster into the world, but it should be a substantially big one. It should be a good dozen hours of gameplay at least. If it's not, it's a fucking ripoff. If not, it's just a way of keeping people's interest, and they've split the game in half, or into whatever fractions they're doing, in order to keep people interested because they've got the hype train going. Now, I was under the impression down to some release dates that it was coming out this December. Those release dates suddenly disappeared, and now all of a sudden we have essentially Metal Gear Solid 5 Part 1 coming out this spring. So, bit gutted really. I was actually quite hoping for the full title to be available, but it turns out, no. It's going to be, um, well, what it were like, a large paid-for demo, because that's pretty much what it's going to be. And it's not going to be... You're not going to get the complete story for Phantom Pain unless you buy Ground Zeroes. So I sure as hell hope they're going to offer a complete edition or something because to a lot of people, I suspect that's going to be a deal breaker. Microsoft's PR is just this never-ending stream of shit because they have announced, a PR guy has said that once the dust settles and all the facts are out, then their PR will be willing to discuss the 720p native resolution of the Xbox One. That is possibly one of the scummiest things I've heard in quite some time, to be honest. What you're telling me is, yeah, we're not going to talk about the, this huge Ferrari and the fact that the quality of our products being questioned. We're going to wait until after you've bought it and then we'll tell you about it. No. That is not how you do PR. Sell it. I'll put this out on Twitter, so I'm going to, going to offer this, offer marks off the bone here. Okay, you want to sell this to people. You say something along the lines of... Optimization of a modern console is a long and drawn out process. With our unique architecture and cloud technology, we are absolutely confident that we will get absolutely incredible power that will be increasing over the next decade or more. Currently, the best way to get a gaming experience is for the most fluid gameplay. So we would encourage developers to go for higher frames per second, higher fidelity of the product, rather than higher resolution. So in some cases you may find some of our games being digitally upscaled to 1080p, somewhat lacking behind the competition with regards to crispness of image. But we are sure that if you stick with us, you will end up with the superior gaming experience and ultimately a more visually impressive product, okay? If you believe it, that's what you fucking say. 
And that was off the top of my goddamn head. Okay, so if you feel free to send me a message, if you want to pay me a couple of hundred thousand, I'll do your PR for you, you dumb shits. Why do you keep doing this to yourselves? You are the worst company for PR. I mean, since Sony did it with the PlayStation 3, when they came out and said, get a second job to play for the PlayStation 3, you've been doing this for six months now. You need to sack your entire commercial team and start from scratch because Christ almighty, your messaging is atrocious. Speaking of which, Microsoft's director of design has said that well, it's a real pain in the ass to have to put vents on the Xbox One because it damages the aesthetic nature of the console and it's so hard to design something that actually fucking works. Jesus! This video is meant to me about me announcing the news, but Christ almighty, really? Really, Microsoft? You're going to have your creative director come out there and say, we'd rather not have vents because it's fucked about with the, with the aesthetics. Does the red ring of death mean nothing to you people? Do you not recall how badly you were hit for, re for PR when your machines were overheating and you allow your creative director to come out and say ventilation is a pain in our ass you say ventilation is paramount it was a challenge because the ventilation positioning was done just so in order to enhance the cooling of the machine that meant our design had to be secondary so it was very hard to find the design that we were happy with say something like that but for fuck's sake don't go god life would be easier if we didn't have to do vents if anything, that machine needs as many vents as humanly possible in his water cooling and a little boy with an electric fan just waving at it 24-7. Because you don't want another red ring of death on your hands. Fucking hell. Well, it seems to be the week for uh, developer capitulation. This week and last week, really. Uh, with Warner Brothers coming out and apologising for Arkham Origins. And now DICE have come out and gone... Our product has some problems. Battlefield 4 has got a number of fidelity issues and they promise to be addressing it in a patch. In fact, I was watching, um, I was watching Total Biscuits, um, WTF is Battlefield 4 today and I noticed he mentioned exactly that, that, that there are a large number of issues. In fact, not surprisingly, because he's possibly one of, the most harsh, one of the harsher critics, has said, don't buy it until it's fixed. And yeah, I have to second that. If it's as bad that DICE have to come out and go, oh, this is pretty, f we've got some bad situations here. Um, so, buy beware. Not to mention the fact that it's going to be on Origins, which is a fucking disaster area to begin with. But that alone, if you were going to buy Battlefield, it's getting patched. So be aware of that. And consider the fact that it is going to impact your experience until they get that patch on the market, which they say will be soon. It's a sad, sad day when game labelling is going to change to a degree that it is. Now, with the new generation of games, there is a pack shot on Kotaku that says that previously it would say a uh, single player game, uh, online components, two to four players, whatever. Games would be different. I believe the PlayStation you say network um, network features and how many players, and Xbox games would then say how many players online it was. Um, now, now there is now a label that says offline play enabled. Yeah, just to uh, reclarify to those of you who aren't really aware of the issue, a game that cannot be played offline is not yours. The reason being that it is entirely dependent on their servers to run. So games like WoW are never yours, you're paying a rental fee. You don't own WoW. You don't own online Call of Duty. It's open as long as they are, as long as there's peer-to-peer -peer games, you've got the game there. Same so Battlefield, Battlefield only runs as long as the servers are up. They are now going to be advertising games on the grounds that, hey hey, you can play offline. Like it's a boon. Like it's not the bare minimum. I know competitive online play is a major component of gaming nowadays. I absolutely know that and I'm not going to be against that. However, when I buy a console title, there are very few that were only online. 
on the PlayStation, you had games like Mag, things like that, that were purely online games. The servers to Mag incidentally get shut down in a few weeks. So, what does that tell you? The game is worthless. I've seen stores selling it for a pound, two pounds, trying to get the units off the shelves because they know full well once the servers go down, it is a product that has no commercial value. It would practically, it would, it would definitely be illegal to sell the product at that point. And this is where we're going. Now we all know that's where it's going. It's all been very clear. So I want you guys to be very, very aware. With the price of the next generation gaming going up, it's well worth. Unless you're just looking for a throwaway multiplayer experience, if you're looking to collect your games, you're looking for to, to pick it up in the future and play it, make damn sure it's available to be played offline. Because otherwise, what you've got there is worthless in a few years' time. If you're willing to pay that money, you know, buy it cheaper, get it in a sale, be more selective of what you're buying, because frankly, the longevity of these titles are just going downhill. And this just goes to prove it. Anyway guys, thanks a lot for watching. You've been looking through the 2020 vision of the Anarchic Eye. Catch you guys later.